Well guys, the bait finesse world just keeps on getting bigger and bigger because not only are there more anglers bait finessing out there, but the amount of new bait finesse tackle being released is kind of getting overwhelming. And today I'm going to show you the latest bait finesse reel from Dream Tackle. Now Dream Tackle sent me this reel probably almost close to a month ago, but unfortunately I've been so busy, I'm just now able to get to it. Now I hope they sent me the right reel, because if I unbox this and it's not the bait finesse version, that's going to be pretty embarrassing. But before we begin, I just want to say that for those of you who remember this reel from Dream Tackle, I'm going to leave a link to their website where you can buy this reel or this reel if you want. Now I wanted to clarify that this particular reel is a Dream Tackle reel, it's not an Okuma reel that's going to be released in the United States. At least I don't think. But yeah, this is a Dream Tackle offering that's using the same platform as the Okuma Hakai. Once again, I'm going to leave a link in the description on where you can buy either this reel or this reel if you want. But this is going to be a quick, quick tabletop analysis because I want to go fishing. All right. So I believe this is a prototype according to what they told me. But, oh damn, okay. It's coming with a, is this velvet or microfiber? Wow, that's cool. So I'm assuming all the production models are gonna come with this nice blue bag as well. But, make sure I got it. Yep, it's right hand, thank God. Boom. Check that out. Yep, this is the right one. It's got this blue shallow spool. It looks to be pretty much the same as the other reel, but of course the components are blue. Almost like a baby blue or sky blue. Now for more detail on both of these reels, go to this video up here, or at least the video that has this thumbnail, and check it out where I weigh the reel and go through all the specs and whatnot and show you the components. But right now, we are going to get to what's most important in a bait finesse reel, and that's going to be the spool weight. But I want to show you guys something before we get to that. Now this reel comes with a spare deep spool, which they packed up real good. But yeah, I'm going to pull this out and we're going to weigh both spools. Okay, so the scale's out. And here's that spare deep spool that you get. And it looks to be pretty much the same as the one that you get in the red reel right here. But of course it's blue. So we're going to lay that down and let's take a look at the shallow spool. And let's talk about this spool and this reel for a second before we weigh it. So right now, the current trend in bait finesse is super small diameter spools that weigh pretty much next to nothing. So of course, Daiwa started this trend with their Steez Air and Alpha's Air, and consequently the Gekka Bijin and the Silver Creek reel, where they all have 28 millimeter diameter spools. And then of course, the Chinese came out with the Black Knight 2, Dark Wolf Ultra, and of course variants of those reels that have 30 millimeter spools that are even lighter than any of the JDM offerings. And of course Shimano followed suit with the new Aldebaran that has a 29 millimeter spool. And then Abu Garcia came out with their Xenon LTX that has a 30 millimeter spool. So the focus on bait finesse currently is on super tiny, extremely lightweight spools that are supposed to excel in casting the most ultralight baits. I'm talking 1.5 grams and under. But this Dream Tackle reel, I believe it's called the DTD100 or something like that. This reel is actually considered old school in the bait finesse reel world because this spool is 33 millimeters. So it's even bigger in diameter than the previous generation bait finesse spools average of 32 millimeters. And you can see that it is quite deep for a BFS spool. And you can see that the center of the spool looks to be 
concave and the porting reminds me of this small JDM company called Kasugi Works, how they used to port their spools. And only the OG bait finesse maniacs remember Kasugi Works. They are a very small niche company, but yeah. Now just for comparison's sake, I brought out the spool of probably what is the closest competitor to this Dream Tackle Reel, and that is the Corrado BFS. And you can immediately see the difference in the spool depth right there and hopefully you guys can see that the dream tackle reel spool is just a little bit taller anyway let us get to weighing now i'm going to adjust his camera real quick because i don't think you guys can see that very well all right so hopefully you guys can see but let's go ahead and weigh this corrado spool first 8.864 extremely heavy by today's BFS standards but if you guys watch my beginner's guide to bait finesse video you'll know that for me personally a bait finesse reel has to have a nine gram and under spool without its bearing so the Corrado BFS just barely makes it and this is for reels with magnetic brakes all right so the dream tackle spool comes in at 8.148 with the bearing and this looks to be a standard 5 by 11 by 4 so we're probably looking at mid 6 gram spool weight if we took the bearing off which of course because I'm OCD like that I'm gonna do it so I'll be right back okay so the spool pin is out but hopefully you guys can see I didn't realize that there was an o-ring there and it's gonna be too difficult to pull the o-ring off and risk breaking it but that o-ring I guess is like Shimano Silent Tune is supposed to keep this bearing from moving around during the cast. But if it is a standard size spool bearing, we're probably looking at mid six and a half grams for this Dream Tackle Bay Finesse spool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and weigh the deeper spool, 9.2 grams with bearing, and I'm pretty sure it's the same weight as the red spool. So without the bearing, you're looking at about eight grams on the dot. And once again, with this spool, you're probably looking at mid to high six grams without the bearing. Now, about five or six years ago, that would have been nearly class leading. But today, when you have reels like the Aldebaran BFS, the Black Knight 2, the Dark Wolf Ultra, this is actually very, very heavy. But when you compare it to what I consider to be its main competition, the Corrado BFS, it's actually significantly lighter. And the fact that the spool itself is deeper, I think this is gonna be perfect for those guys who are doing upper end BFS or power BFS when you need to run heavier line like eight pound and you need more line capacity. But it's still light enough to throw the lighter lures as well, at least in theory. Now, before we pop the side play back on, just wanna quickly show you guys the brake system it is a mag track style system. It is not dynamic. There's no spring loading anywhere. It looks to have eight magnets. But yeah, that's it. Now it's time to do some fishing. Okay guys, so I made it out here to this creek. And this creek feeds into a big reservoir. And around this time of year, when the leaves start to fall, Generally, bass tend to come up in here, I guess, to feed. Now, I haven't seen any, but it doesn't mean they're not in here. But catching a bass or two is just going to be a bonus, really, because we're out here to test this Dream Tackle Bay Finesse Reel. Now, out of all the BFS rods that I have, I chose the Major Craft Speed Style 6 foot 4 Ultralight lure rating one thirty second of an ounce to one quarter ounce and this is a JDM bass rod so it's very stiff even though it's ultralight power let me try to show you guys just how stiff it is and the reason I chose this particular rod is because I think it should be able to cast the lower weights I'm going to try to eventually cast with this reel but I'm going to be fishing pretty much exclusively weightless plastics so i'm gonna need something that's got some backbone to set a hook 
and enough power to move these fish out of some cover that I see over there if I hook into one. So no new lead trout rod today. But I have the Dream Tackle reel spooled up with six pound fluorocarbon. And hopefully you guys can see, but it's probably filled just under halfway. This thing holds a lot of line. Now I could have put more on here, but it holds more than enough six pound as it is. And let's go ahead and set the reel up. Now it comes from the factory with a lot of side to side play. So I'm gonna tighten up that spool tension to just eliminate that. Maybe have a little bit of side to side play because this reel is anything like the Okuma Hakai that it's based off of. The brakes are very potent. Now the spool tension doesn't click, but turn it, it takes some effort, but it's very precise. All right, there we go. And yeah, now I know this combo isn't, I guess the most aesthetically pleasing with the contrasting colors. And that's something that I passed on to Michael over at Dream Tackle who sent me the reel. I let him know that in the future, you may want to choose more neutral colors because there are people out there who won't buy a specific rod or reel because it's not going to match what they have already. All right, let's pick our first bait and get to fishing. Okay, so I'm all set up. First thing we're going to throw is going to be this Zoom Centipede. I think it's like a four inch stick bait, weightless of course. And I think this weighs about five grams, so right on the limit of what I call upper end bait finesse. Gonna tighten the drag. And just let you guys know, this reel does not have a drag clicker. All right, so the brakes, I am going to turn them all the way up. The external dial goes from one to 10 and we're gonna slowly back them down, but let us start casting. Okay, it's a smooth caster so far on that first cast. So let's go down to the number eight position. Now there are a lot of trees around me. Just gonna have to be careful about my cast stroke. Can't really just heave one out there, but oh wow. It's a very, very smooth caster. I think where I really need to cast is over there underneath this bridge, but I'm gonna work this bank real quick. Before I start trying to cast or pitch underneath there. All right, let's go to number six on the brakes. Okay, we had a blow up there. So these brakes may not be as strong as the high Kai brakes. Okay, so six was too low. Let's go in between six and eight. Okay, so right there, there was maybe one or two loops of overrun that was sorted out quickly. So, all right, I'm gonna step down on this rock. I'm gonna try to reach the opposite bank there. It looks to be probably about 30 yards. All right, so smooth, quiet cast right here. Just a little bit of hum, but so far, so good. Now, I've had more room. I could easily cast this way across the bank, I feel, well into the opposite bank. Ah, shit. Went off into the tree. Let me see if I can get it out. Here we go. Now, the fact that I don't see any sunfish is uh, very discouraging. A couple of small minnows no sunfish. All right, I'm gonna try to do an overhead and get all the way across to the edge of the other bank. Okay, so I guess because the overhead cast generates more spool speed, had a small blow up. And of course I casted right into a tree again. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this one out. 
Okay, so the brakes are definitely strong enough for upper end weightless plastics. Let's do some pitching. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the brakes up to eight and I'm gonna try to pitch it right to the corner of that bridge pylon. That's probably about 15 yards or 45 feet. All right, about 10 foot short. Uh-oh. Well, definitely felt a tap there. Okay, a little bit higher trajectory, got me more distance on that pitch, wind up hitting that pipe. So hopefully any bass down there will think that that was a worm that fell right off the pipe. All right, getting closer. That landed probably about three feet short of the front of that bridge pylon. All right, a couple more pitches, and then I'm gonna move positions. There we go. Nice low trajectory cast. It landed like a foot in front of that bridge pylon there. So this reel pitches very well, which is to be expected for having a six and a half gram spool approximately. Let's see if I can actually hit that pylon. Nope, couple of foot short there. All right, one last pitch. One last pitch. Ah, okay, hit the pipe there. Caused me to have a little backlash, but nothing too severe. Okay, so I'm on the other side of the bridge and let's see if we can get this lure all the way to the opposite side. All right was going out there pretty good, but the trajectory was too high. Now this is where like a really long rod kind of comes in handy. Okay, so we're dropping down in lure weight to a Kitek Easy Shiner, three inch with what appears to be a 16th ounce jig head. But I'm gonna try to put a weight of each lure on the scale for you guys. Now, normally I would fish something this light with four pound line, but uh, let's see if they'll take a minnow lure and also see how good this Dream Tackle Bait Finesse reel can handle it. All right, pretty good. Now I can't put a full swing into, into these casts because of all this brush around me. I can't really reach back but I'm gonna turn the brakes down just a hair. All right, here we go. We're probably getting at least 80 feet. Now, Michael over at Dream Tackle put a link to a video where I think somebody was using this reel to cast a three gram lure, like over 40 yards. But I don't think it was lure. I think it was like a casting plug. So while well, that's impressive, you know, with the casting plug, a lot of bait finesse reels can do that. Casting plugs will definitely travel significantly farther than a lure you fish with. I might be able to go down a little bit, but the times I fish here and have caught bass, they have been with minnow lures like this Easy Shiner. But yeah, one eighth handles it pretty, pretty darn easily. Okay, so I put a little bit more oomph into that cast and got a little bit of overrun. So we are definitely on the edge of brakes. Now the actual feel of the real wall fishing is very much like the Hakai. Very smooth, quiet, well built. No creaking or clacking noises these machine components very solid the click on the star drag is very precise 
So very well built reel. Now let's talk about how much this reel is supposed to cost. Now I think the price on the website and what Michael at Dream Tackle told me is that it retails for $199. So that means it is directly in competition with the Corrado BFS, which I think the price on the Corrado BFS has jumped up to $199 as well. But he told me that there would be discounts available. So I think the cost of the reel is like 168. Don't quote me, go to the, the website that I'm linking in the description. So that's a pretty decent discount over the Corrado. And you get that extra deeper spool that definitely makes it more versatile. Now with the Corrado BFS, you'd have to buy an entirely new Corrado, probably like the, the MGL 150 or the 70. With this Dream Tackle reel, if you want to swap over to, I guess, regular bass fishing, you just need to swap that spool in and put it on a different rod and that's it. Okay. So one eighth of an ounce roughly is what I'm thinking this lure weighs and it's handling it no problem. Now with bait finesse, of course, one eighth of an ounce is like, to me, the starting point of bait finesse. So any reel that is supposed to be a bait finesse reel should at minimum be able to handle one eighth of an ounce easily. Now the true test is how low can a reel comfortably go? And after I reel this in, I'm gonna switch over to a super lightweight lure and we're gonna find out. All right, so we are going to now cast probably the lightest lure of this test. It's a Kitech Easy Shiner two inch with a 132nd ounce jig head. And I think the total weight of the lure is probably around two grams or less. Of course, I'll put a picture of it on the screen for you guys. Now, normally I would definitely be using four pound line to cast something this light, but uh, let's see what happens. All right, let me pitch this out here real quick. See if this reel can pitch two grams. <laughs> All right, brakes definitely set too high. Hopefully you guys saw that pitch just pendulum up into like a rainbow arc. Or maybe, you know, the spool's too big, but let's see what kind of distance we can get out of this two gram lure. But before I leave, since I'm now at this much more open casting area, I tied back on the Kitech Easy Shiner 2 inch with a 132nd ounce head. And I'm gonna show you what this Dream Tackle Bait Finesse Reel can do with this lightweight lure. Here we go. Okay, hopefully you guys saw where that landed but we're getting probably around 70 foot. Yeah, that's at least 20 yards. This is with uh, overhead cast. Okay, had a little bit of overrun there. But since the cast went probably at least 70 foot, it worked itself out. Turned the brakes up a little to solve that overrun. That means I can also cast a little bit harder. But yeah, around a two gram or maybe close to 1 16th ounce lure, this uh, Dream Tackle Bait Finesse reel handling it no problem. Of course, with a lighter powered rod, and four pound line, you can expect it to do even better. Castability should be even easier. Okay, let's go in my car and talk about it. 
Okay, so I'm back at home and I decided to do this quick wrap up here instead of in the car. But there we go guys, the Dream Tackle DTD 100 bait finesse reel that just happens to come with a spare deep spool. Now this reel performed pretty much just like I thought it would. And that means it's not going to set any kind of new casting standards, but it's going to be a very, very solid performer, probably down to 1 16th of an ounce, of course, with the right rod and line. But the great thing about this reel is that it kind of goes against the current trend of all the super lightweight micro spools that you're seeing coming out that will suffer when it comes to upper end, I guess more power BFS oriented techniques. And in fact, I believe this reel along with I think the Corrado BFS, the SLX BFS, and the Conquest BFS, as well as I think the Abu Garcia Ultracast BF8 are the only reels that have these bigger 32 millimeter spools. And I'm pretty sure the next Conquest BFS or the next Corrado BFS, they're gonna drop it down to one of these smaller micro spools as well. So with the current state of bait finesse, this reel is definitely bucking the trend. And I can see this reel being very popular here in America where the bait finesse rods being offered here are definitely in the upper range when it comes to lure weights. So yeah, go to the link in the description. Now the price, I see that it's gonna be 30% off of retail and I think it's priced in Japanese yen. So it's gonna depend on the conversion rate. But as of this video, this reel, I think is somewhere around 155 before shipping. Shipping is uh, pretty cheap. So when you factor in the fact that the Corrado BFS is 199 plus tax, so that's gonna add another 20 bucks. This reel is significantly cheaper and it's more versatile, of course, because it comes with this extra spool. All right, guys, I wanna thank Michael from Dream Tackle for sending this out to me to test out. Very impressive reel, very well-built reel, and it turns out it's a huge value as well. Thanks a lot.